When it comes to aquarium filtration, I'm usually looking for the easiest, simplest method to keep my fish happy and healthy. I don't know about you, but I am a busy mom, got a full-time job at Aquarium Co-op, so I don't have time to be worrying about some kind of fancy high maintenance filter, which is why in the past few years, I've mostly been running things like sponge filters. However, recently I've been feeding my 20 gallon aquarium pretty heavily because I wanna make sure the potty babies get enough to eat, which means my sponge filters aren't always able to keep up and get that water crystal clear. Now I do have this old hang on back filter <laughs> that I use um, as a beginner and there's nothing wrong with it, but it just had a few quirks that I never got quite used to. So I decided to ask you, my audience, to see if you had any cool hacks for making this thing not only super efficient, but also easier to use. All right, hack number one is if your hang on back filter comes with disposable cartridges, go ahead and get rid of all those and instead use reusable filter media instead. So usually the companies, they give you disposable cartridges that have to be replaced like every month or so because they want to keep making money off of you. But instead, I like using AquaClear because it already comes with the reusable filter media, such as sponge, which would act as mechanical filtration. And that strains out any particles that are in the water, kind of like a coffee filter. Then for the next layer, I like to use these bio rings And they have lots of pore surfaces, so they can house lots of beneficial bacteria that ends up processing that toxic nitrogen waste that comes from your fish poop. For the final layer, AquaClear likes to give you activated carbon for chemical filtration, which is used to remove medications or tannins from the water, but that is not reusable. So I usually get a packet of Purigen instead, which you can uh, clean up using bleach to reuse it. If you don't know what mechanical biological filtration are, I have a whole video over here that kind of explains it. Now, I don't usually use chemical filtration for the top layer. Instead, I use filter floss to get my water super clean. This is the cheap batting that you can get from craft stores. And because it's so dense and fine, it strains out those really, really fine particles that you normally would not get filtered out from a sponge filter. Now, while the filter floss is really cheap, sometimes I find it easier actually to buy the fine filter pads instead. And you just cut it out to shape stuff it on the very top layer, and then when it gets clogged up, go ahead and throw it away and replace it. Hack number two is to cover the filter intake. You can see there is a basket over here, which has slits that little baby fish or leaves or other debris can get sucked in and then end up ruining your motor. So instead, you wanna cover it with something like this, which is called a pre-filter sponge. This is great because not only does it protect your motor from getting burned up, but also it provides additional mechanical and biological filtration. Just make sure that you clean this thing every once in a while or else it'll get clogged up. Same thing applies to your filter media. You just take it off and then the water that you remove during a normal aquarium water change, you can take this, squeeze it in the, that water or swish it around and that way you will clean the debris in here without killing the beneficial bacteria in the sponge. Hack number three is if you wanna use live plants to purify your water of toxic nitrogen waste, but you have fish that like to eat plants, you might consider growing plants in your filter instead. So this would require you to leave off the lid of your filter, but you basically can take something like a pothos plant and then just cut off a little leaf and then stick the stem part into the water and it will start growing roots, which is really cool. I bet Lucky Bamboo would probably also work as well, but Julian says that they actually put their pothos inside of a mesh plastic basket, so that way it's easier to remove during cleaning and then they can trim off the roots if they get too long. Rad Dragon has a whole list of other plants that you can also consider trying, but some of them might be a little bit too big to fit in the filter, so do a little research first. Hack number four is to minimize any vibration noises. Now, I've never had an issue with this, but Bill Smith, says that he just takes the lid off of the filter, puts a rubber band around it like this, and then you place it on there and it's no longer shaking, yay! Now, if you have the issue where the filter is rubbing up against the tank rim or the tank itself, other people have mentioned putting a piece of foam or sponge between the two and that will completely silence it. Now, if your filter still has too strong of a current coming out from it, even when you put the flow to the lowest setting, there are several ways you can baffle it, which I have a whole video on over here. 
Some people like to cut a water bottle in half and place it over the output of the filter, but I feel like it looks like a piece of trash and isn't very pretty. So instead, I like to buy a soap dish like this. It has a really strong suction cup. This one's really easy because you just place it right under here and then you flip the switch downwards and then it sticks, it's really strong. Some people like to put glass marbles or even grow moss in it um, to help kind of dampen the noise even more. Another option would be to get a really tall piece of fake decor or it's hardscape and then put it right under the filter like this. That one's obviously a little bit too tall, but basically you would have the water pouring on top of the decoration and that will not only baffle the flow, but also help minimize any splashing noises so you don't feel like peeing every few minutes. <laughs> So hack number six is to hide a little heater inside. Now this would depend on the size of your filter and your aquarium, but basically there are these small flat heaters that you could potentially slip inside kind of behind that filter media. And supposedly that helps to distribute the heat in the aquarium more evenly, as well as prevents any fish from getting stuck behind. And that is actually a thing. I have totally had an emerald green quarry get stuck behind a heater once and actually pass away. So something to watch out for. Now, when you're doing a water change, a lot of times you want to turn off the filter so that if the water goes down below the intake tube, the motor doesn't start running dry and burning out potentially. Um, however, the only way to do that on a lot of filters is to unplug it. And it can be hard to reach around the back of the tank and find where that outlet is. So instead, Jeffrey recommends using a Wi-Fi timer like this. And then that way you can just use your phone to turn on and off that filter, which is really nice. Plus when you're out of town, you can check your phone to see whether the power is on and is running your filter. Plus if your hang on back filter happens to be self priming, which means you don't have to pour in water into the media basket whenever you want to restart it again, you can just set your Wi-Fi timer to always go on at midnight every day. And that way, if you accidentally forget to turn on your filter after the water change, your timer will catch it for you on your phone. Do you like floating plants? Then you probably hate it when they keep getting pushed down by the waterfall of your hang on back filter. So one thing you can do is take some airline tubing and make a little ring out of it like this, which I, in my case, I use hot glue, but I've heard that you can just heat one end and then snap it over the other end and then let it shrink shut. So make a ring like this and then you want this suction cup like this that holds an airline tubing. So then, you can just snap that in there and then place this ring wherever you want in the aquarium so that the floating plants stay inside of the ring. However, Aaron Smith had the opposite idea where, I mean, very similar, where basically you take the same ring and then you mount it underneath the hang on back filter like this. And then so the waterfall would basically pour into the ring and it would prevent any of the floating plants from getting inside of the ring. Hack number nine is if your impeller in the motor is sticking or making a lot of noise, you may need to take it out and clean it or lubricate it. So Gary actually recommends using a super lube grease because it is a food safe and non water soluble lubricant. Um, I haven't done a ton of research on it, but apparently it is aquarium safe. There's a lot of opinions out there on what is proper impeller lubricant, but if it's giving you trouble, Give it a shot, take it out, and make sure to take care of it. Number 10 was something I had never heard of before, but apparently you can put a surface skimmer outflow box around the intake of your filter, which is pretty cool. So surface skimmers are more common, I feel like in the saltwater hobby, where if you have kind of this oily scum on the top of your the surface of your water, you can suck it in and clear it out. But I usually use something like an air stone or a sponge filter to break up that surface tension, and then I don't usually have a problem. But how it works is, you take off the filter intake, it's still gonna suck up water through this tube, and then you have this box with slits in it that you position around the filter intake. And so there's a magnet on the outside so you can raise or lower the box so that the slits on the box are perfectly uh, positioned with a water surface. And then that water surface will get sucked in through the slits and then pulled in through the intake and then filtered out through your filter media as usual. There are pre-made versions that you can buy as well as DIY versions that you can apparently make using a 3D printer. So something to check out. Whew, 
I really thought of Hang On Back Filters as a good beginner filter, but thanks to your help, I realized there's a lot of little advanced techniques that I can apply to truly customize this thing and address any specific problems that I'm personally facing, such as getting crystal clear water. Now, if you're curious about the differences between a hang on back filter and a sponge filter, I actually have a whole video over here that talks about kind of the pros and cons of each and actually different circumstances when I like to use one versus the other. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.